What's up guys, it's Gnarly Charlie. Uh, I just did a uh, listen of the new Ghost album on Spotify. I'm kind of here at work right now, so I can't really uh, you know, have a physical copy in my hand right now. I did not go out and buy the CD. I was gonna hope to go to the record store tomorrow and get it, if it was good. Uh, it's about 50% on me, man. Um, honestly, it's, it's really not that great. I'm not really impressed. I may eventually get a copy of it on vinyl just to kind of finish out the collection because I got the first three albums on vinyl, but for me, it didn't do it. Uh, the uh, first track of the album is a song called Ashes. Um, can't really tell you the length of it. I can't really tell you much of the length of any of the stuff. I kind of wrote down notes of... Uh, basically how I felt to the song when it, during the song as I was listening to them. So uh, kind of the first reaction bits of it. But uh, Ash is basically just a cool intro for uh, the second song on the album, which is Rats. Now Rats is the, s the first single that we got off of the album and uh, really catchy, very heavily 80s sounding but was not super impressed by it. I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was enough for me to go out and want to be like, hmm, I want to maybe hear more of this and possibly go buy the album, which is basically what the first initial single was there for. And hopefully singles after that, which Dance Macabre did not do much for me, but I'll get back to that in a minute once we get down to it. Uh, third uh, track, Faith. Uh, I'm going to be honest, it was kind of boring. It did not hook me the way Rats did. Now, Ashes kind of did a little bit because it was a cool kind of little intro into Rats, but Faith was just like, <laughs> boring. Uh, apparently there's a saxophone solo right at the end of it. I couldn't really tell if it was a saxophone or if it was just a guitar with chorus on it, to be honest. It was just, no, I didn't like it. However, probably I think the last 30, 45 seconds of the song, it just kind of stops. Like, you know, the actual song, Faith, itself stops. And a track on the album keeps going. You know, it kind of waits for like two seconds, maybe three, and then picks right into another track. It... Honestly, to me, it sounds like he is off of the latter album, third album. So maybe they intend to do that live. I've never seen Ghost Live, but maybe they intend to do that in the future for a, you know, a transfer into Faith, into he is. But like I said, that whole track itself did not really seem to impress me. Uh, fourth song is See the Light. Really boring. Another really, you know, boring track. Uh, heavily 80s. Uh, the chorus was not catchy whatsoever. Kind of bored with it, like I said. The only thing that I found really good about it was the guitar solo. The guitar solo was really cool, and, uh, it actually seemed like they actually put some time and effort into making it sound good. And, uh, like I said, other than that, it's just a cool guitar solo. Uh, fifth track is, um, My Sma, My Sma, maybe? It's a great instrumental. There is no real definitive theme. You know, if you listen to an instrumental by, like, C. Vi, or Joe Satriani, or basically anybody who has an instrumental history of where they do a lot of instrumental songs, they kind of have a theme that they always like to go back to or at least kind of stick to. This song just kind of goes and not in the best way. Like, uh, it's more of an awkward way, if you will. Kind of like if uh, Inner Sandman kind of went straight in from the uh, cleaning, like the clean guitar part, straight into the verse riff, the ta na na ta na na it would go straight into that, and like, 
there's no real build up to it. It's just kind of like here's one riff, here's another riff in the same key, and that's it. Like I said, so far, only two songs out of this thing have really struck me, and one one of those was the intro to the other song. Sixth song is Dance Macabre. This was the second single. And uh, this is where, when I heard the single, you know, I saw a music video with uh, all the rock stars and they're reacting to it. And they're like, yeah, this song's great. But in actuality, you're just kind of like, what the fuck is this song? Because it does not sound original. I mean, it, it sounds like it's already been an 80s song somewhere. Uh, like I said, not very original whatsoever. And for me, I just didn't really care for it. But that was the initial kind of, all right, I want to listen to it before I actually buy it. And that's what killed the order, the pre-order for me, because I had initially planned on pre-ordering it so I could get the uh, uh, the box set and it has like the mask and it's got the vinyl and I think it had the CD version in it and some other stuff but I thought it'd be kind of cool to have like the ghost mask you know it's like a plague doctor looking thing and uh, yeah Dance Macabre really kind of killed that for me the next song we have uh, Pro Memoria and this is this is about as cheesy as it gets for the 80s. It, it's literally a cheesy ballad that, I mean, it's got a pretty good chorus to it. Honestly, I can't tell you much about the chorus because I really don't know too much about it. Because I can't really remember it. This whole album for me was just kind of like boring, other than the few songs that I already had heard. You know, I, yeah, it just kept getting worse and worse. But uh, I stuck it out because I wanted, I told a friend of mine I'd do a review of it, and god damn it, shit. I fucked myself over on that one. Uh, next we have Witch Image. It's not very catchy, it's got nothing to do with witches that I listen to. I uh, was not very impressed whatsoever. Uh, Jeez. God. Next to last song, Hell. Yeah, something. I'll leave the track list in the thing. It's something in Finnish, I'm assuming. Swedish, maybe. I don't know. Definitely doesn't seem like English. It is. I believe this is the other instrumental, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Uh, kind of starts like as, as like a waltz, you know, kind of the three four, the ba 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 ba. But uh, dude, again, wasn't really catchy whatsoever. Boring after that little intro waltz thing, and then uh, you know, the whole thing just seemed like a whole like this whole song feels like a filler track. Like, hey, we've got a deadline. We need a track. I'm gonna goof around on the keyboard for a little bit. Add some guitar to it. Sorry, guys. Last song is Life Eternal. And, uh, just like Ashes was to Rats, this finished song is to Life Eternal except life eternal, or except for hell, the finished word, is like a big five minute track for this life eternal, and life eternal, oh my god. You think you'd expect for maybe to end on a high note, but it's like, let's pick the worst possible song and end the album on that song. This is basically life eternal like kind of a slow kind of feels like they could possibly have just this could be an acoustic song um 
just acoustic guitar and piano, and it would probably sound the exact same. And, uh, you know, I feel they should have possibly went for a heavy song for a ending, you know, ended on a high note, but they ended it on the quietest note possible, and, uh, shit. Horrible. Kind of overall, like I said, I, it might be a 3 out of 10. 4 if I'm generous, you know. It, it It's definitely not going to be one of those things that I'm going to be spinning anytime soon. But, um... I'm sorry if you pre-ordered it and you probably think it's crap too. If you do, please leave a comment because, shit, I, like I said, I was not impressed by a majority of this album. And uh, I kind of feel bad about writing a review on it, but like I said, I made a promise to a friend that I would. And, uh, sorry dude. Maybe next time, but uh, until then. Keep it gnarly.